priest from the church came that fall and talked to me. You know, he said, you can't do this. And I says, well, I did. I did. And I said, I'll get the Bible and show you. And he just pounded on the table. He says, you are not getting that. Sago, Skinagoga, welcome to the storyteller. From the deserts of the Southwest to the frozen tundra of the North, and all across this great land there are stories, true stories of First Nations people whose lives have been changed forever, who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. Join us as we hear more from The Storyteller. Then finally, one night as I walked in the church, they were singing a song that I really like, which is, I know whom I have believed. And it, it was like it was there for me. And I listened to it. Wow, it was like somebody wrote it for me. It's a kind of song I would like to have written. And that night I couldn't leave the church. I just sat there when church was over. And uh, the Harlan and his wife, the missionaries, came up and they said, did you want to talk? I said, yes. And so he had his kids bring my kids into their house. And he says, okay, Nida, what do you want? I said, I want to accept the Lord as my Savior. And he says, okay. And, you know, he didn't act surprised or, wow, this is what we're waiting for. They were just, took it just like, and I thought, gee, aren't they excited? And I thought, no, I don't want it that way. And I said, I just want to accept the Lord. And, you know, he took out the Bible and gave me verses to read. And, and he says, and, you know, pray and ask the Lord to save you. Ask him to forgive you your sins. And he said, he's going to forgive every sin in your life. All your past is going to be forgiven. And you'll be born again. And I said, yes, I want to pray, you know, hurry up, let's pray. <laughs> and so uh, he says, uh, Abner will pray. That's his wife. He said, and then you pray and ask Jesus to save you. And I said, okay. And I prayed and I didn't just pray for salvation. I asked the Lord to help me be a better wife, be a better mom, be a, just a better person. And and be a good neighbor be i want people to see that i'm a christian i just wanted everything you know and as i'm praying and i'm trying to think of what to say he says you can ask him to you can thank him for saving you i thanked him right then and there for saving me and and then finally i quit and then harlan prayed and when we were done you know we just had a great big group hug and and he says well <laughs> I says, well, I want to go home and tell Andrew that I got saved. <laughs> he says, okay. And I was just going out and he says, don't forget your kids. <laughs> I said, okay. So I took the kids and I mean, I felt like I was walking on air. Took the kids home and my husband was home drinking. And he said, so what took so long? Because every time I went to church before, when I came home, sometimes he would ask me, what did I learn? And I would tell him everything I heard. Because because he was doing that, I would listen extra careful so I could tell him. And so when that night when I came in, he said, uh, so what took so long? What happened? I said, I accepted the Lord as my Savior. And he said, well, it's about time. <laughs> Uh, not too much longer. He says, you're not a Christian. I says, I don't care what you say. I know I'm a Christian. I said, I know I'm forgiven. And he tried to make it hard for me for a while. And uh, and then he'd quit, you know. He'd go out and drink, come back. And uh, my mom came. And I told her about it. And, you know, she was in and out. But... Uh, other people came, my sister came, and the priest from the church came that fall and talked to me. You know, he said, you can't do this. And I says, well, I did. I did. And I said, I'll get the Bible and show you. And he just 
pound on the table. He says, you are not getting that. And so I didn't. And he says, and what makes you think your life is so good? I says, because I am a born again Christian. I said, since you won't let me go get my Bible, and this was in my house, I said, Romans 12, 1 and 2 teach you how to live. You know, I have a lot of favorite verses, but I think Romans 12, 1 and 2 have been the key verse of my Christian life. I've been a Christian now for 39 years. <laughs> and Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind to prove which is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And that have been the verse of my life. There were times, you know, when like my husband was out or something and I'd lay in bed thinking and I'd go over that verse. And, and even now at night, you know, I think there are some nights the Lord just keeps me awake to let me go over verses and pray for people. But uh, so that have been, I really feel, you know, the Lord has put in those verses in my life. And... Um, the village is a small town where we lived, Igigik. At that time, you either were a Christian or you were not a Christian. And that's exactly how it was in that town. When somebody accepted the Lord, everybody went there too. You know, people that never brought liquor before to my house were bringing it. My mom, she would come and drink with us. She would never bring any. Now she was bringing it so I could have some, but I wouldn't. And it went on all the time. People would come and see my husband. They'd bring liquor. And uh, usually came and got it, you know. But now everybody was talking about it. And some people would see them say, Oh, you just like challenge. That's why you did that. I said, Man, this was the greatest challenge I ever had. But uh, my husband, I, you know, I just kept talking to him about the Lord. And he would tell me, You're never, ever taking this bottle away from me. You'll never change me. I'd have uh, magazines around the house or Sunday school papers. He would, uh, you know, some nights the baby would wake and I'd go out to get a bottle. I had a calendar that was a Christian calendar. There he's out there with a flashlight reading it. He'd get so mad when I'd catch him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just kept on. By the time I was a uh, Christian for like five or six months, and it seems like after I became a Christian, he just made sure he drank every day. Sometimes started early in the day. So I went up and I was at church and I told our preacher, I said, you know, I don't think he's ever going to change. And he says, why is that? I said, I feel like he's drinking up more. He said, well, is he hurting you guys or, you know, physically touching you guys, hurting you? I said, no. But this is bad, I said. And he said, well, you know, the only thing I can say is, I know you're doing good. The only thing I can say is, uh, you're, uh, you're the only Bible he's reading right now. And I thought, wow. How am I being read? I said, okay. So, you know, I went on. There was a night, I think it was in February. This was nine months after I accepted the Lord. It was late in the night, 9, 30, 10 o'clock. He says, can you make me a sandwich? And I said, sure I can. So I started making him a sandwich. And I thought, oh, he's going to go out, see the boys again, and be out late. He was putting on his boots and lacing them up. He said, I think I'm going to go see Harlan. Harlan is the missionary. And I said, okay, your sandwich is ready. You know, I just quickly said, hey, it's ready, go. You know, eat it and go. But I just gave it to him, and he ate it. And as he was eating his sandwich, he says, uh, one thing I could never do is memorize verses like you. And I said, well, that's okay, but you know, it can come easy sometimes. And he says, no, I could never memorize verses. And he was out the door. 
and we watched him. The kids got up and says, where'd dad go? Did he say he was going up to the church? And I said, yeah, and we watched. We saw him pass the window, go into the church, and no lights came on in the church. And the kids, he must be in the dark. And then we saw somebody come out of the house and go into the church, and the lights came on. Well, and we were excited. The kids went back to bed and waited and waited and waited. Finally, there was the lights went out, and you know, I wondered, is he going to come home? What is he going to do? Is this going to be a really a bad night or what? And then there was a knock at the door. I opened it, and he just stood there. I said, "What?" He said, "Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved." I said, that's a whole verse. I said, that's Romans 10, 13. He said, I know. And I hugged him. And he said, yep, I accepted the Lord. <laughs> I was so excited. You, you want to eat anything? You want something to drink or <laughs> what? <laughs> he says, I got to go to bed. <laughs> I was so excited. I was up all night. I wanted to talk to him. You know, after all that struggle and restlessness he had. He just stretched out and slept like a baby. He just slept. I couldn't wake him up. I kept the lights on, looked at him. He was breathing good, everything. But I wanted to talk to my Christian husband. <laughs> but, you know, he was just, all the burdens were gone, you know. Yes, his sins were forgiven, and he just couldn't wake up. I mean, he was relaxed, sleeping. The next day, he said, should I tell the kids that I accepted the Lord. I said, sure, why not? And I said, they've been praying for you. And so when we were having dinner, we told. And uh, my little kids would convict him so many times, many, many times when we are sit down to have dinner. The little ones, like the three and four year olds, they'd say, wish dad was a Christian so he could pray. And he would say, just be quiet and eat. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, I wish Dad could come to church with us so he can help you, Mom. <laughs> and the baby at the time was Joyce, and she'd just look at him when we're getting ready to go, and he'd say, Don't let her look at me like that. I said, I'm not letting her look at you like that. But the night after, when he accepted the Lord, after we told the kids, and when we'd go to bed, he'd read, and he'd cry. He says, Why didn't you tell me? I says, didn't I? <laughs> well, I wasn't understanding it like this before. Now he was really understanding everything as he was reading. It was pretty neat, you know. God says in his word, Call to me, and I will answer you. And I will show you great and wonderful things which you do not know. Have you called out to God? He desires to show you great and mighty things too. It begins by turning to Him and asking Him to forgive you. Put your trust in His Son Jesus as the one who saved you from the penalty of your sin. Then you will be forgiven and the broken relationship with your Creator will be restored. Call on Him. He's waiting to hear from you now. If you have any questions or comments about what you've heard, We'd enjoy hearing from you. You can phone us toll-free at 877-766-4648. That's 877-766-4648. You can also visit us on the Internet at withoutreservation.com. There's more to this story, so we hope you'll join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller.